and welcome to the 18th episode of Keen Minds, covering NBC's The Blacklist. This was episode 11 of the fourth season. I'm Jen, a.k.a. Takata Cycle. And I am Tessa. And we are covering the episode today. So let's just, uh, you want to start with Liz? Just dive right in. It was a very Liz-centered episode. It was kind of nice. It, it was. I, I was. I was enjoying... Liz being a badass and, and using her profiling. It was, I mean, to me, this was, you know, one of the episodes in which I feel that Megan has done um, the, some of her finest acting. Although I must say in, in all of season four, um, I always thought she was a good actor, but she really have gone, like this had been an excellent uh, showcase for her, this oh, episode was- in particular. She was great, and Liz is always fun undercover, in my opinion. I, I enjoy, of course, I, I tend towards characters that like undercover work and, and manipulation and such. It was it was very fun to watch. One of my favorite moments in the entire episode, it kind of sounds odd, but when she's sitting there and she's waiting for them to figure out that the diamonds are not where they think they are, and she's waiting on, on everything mm-hmm. to come through... And she's just, she's got her arm hooked around the, the, uh, the, the pole the and it's just yeah. swinging around like she doesn't have a care in the world. She's just, she plays it off so well and she's so in control. And so it was really interesting because it's, <laughs> one of the things I noticed, it's, you've got, Liz has always been a great manipulator, but when she's an FBI agent, it's called profiling. When she's a criminal, it's called manipulation. And so it's the exact mm-hmm. same thing, but it's two sides of the same coin. That you know, it just depends on how you go at it. She's an expert manipulator. She uses it in all parts of her life for the most part. Mm-hmm. But it depends on basically it depends on who is okaying it. If the government is okaying it, she's a profiler, she's undercover, she's working. If they don't okay it, then she's manipulating and she's working angles. And it's really interesting to think about Basically, mm-hmm. who who's signing those checks is the entire reason on if it's good or bad. Well, it's it goes to something I've been saying for the longest time about um, people saying, oh, but, you know, uh, such and such is a criminal. Uh, the other one is a good guy. Intelligence, it's intelligence people are basically criminals working for the government. Everything they do, it's illegal. It's immoral. It's repugnant, most of it. They manipulate, they lie, they exploit, they um, they spy, they look for weaknesses, it's people they entrap. Doing ba- it's people doing bad things for a good reason, as the uh, new tagline for Redemption is. Which was interesting because uh, th- their media team on Twitter put that out and, and made that exact same comment. Uh, uh, before the episode aired was uh, something along the lines of is she doing or uh, a good thing bad things for a good reason we'll see or something along those lines mm-hmm. but they used that tagline I said oh that's interesting hey. she's going undercover she's working all of the, these angles and they're using the redemption tagline hmm <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah it's I, I think it's a it, it was a great episode for Liz especially because we've been we've been seeing very little of Liz on the cover lately I mean she went on the cover uh, when she was in I think the last time she did it was in um, Earl King that's the last time that she went undercover for as an agent for for the FBI yeah might yeah. Have been. but um, wow that has been a while but to be fair, her face has been all over the place, but I, you know, and this has been a conversation online, you know, how was she not recognized? Why would, you know, how realistic is it's that? It's TV. Well, yeah, one of it, one of the reasons is it's TV <laughs> and you've got to make, you know, you're not going to put your leading lady on the sidelines just because her face has been everywhere. But the other thing is, honestly, at least I don't know if it's like this everywhere, but Americans have very short memories a lot of times, you know, I mean, if you think about it, that you have twenty-four hour news cycles, these people's faces may be all over the place. But how close? How closely do you pay attention? Like, well, look you... at look at Reddington. Yeah, I mean, could people have picked someone out of a crowd? You know, um, oh Lord, no. Just, just 
for an example, a few years ago with the uh, the Boston Marathon bombing, I couldn't have picked that guy out of a crowd. I had the news on every moment that I was home, watching the, the news feeds when that happened. Couldn't have picked him out of a crowd, though. Mm-mm. Even though and, I was paying and, attention to what was happening. And look at Reddington. Reddington had been in a hotel uh, under the name Mr. Holmes, and, and nobody puts him and Reddington together. In fact, Wrestler even says... I can count on my hand the number of times there've been a credible sighting of Raymond Reddington. So yeah. he basically goes undetected. And I think a lot of it is um, there is there is a furtiveness that most people tend to have when they feel guilty, and that is what draws people's attention. And cops are trained to look for that uh, because you feel that you have to be furtive and, and you know, you're hiding. And a lot of the times when you're not, they won't even look at you because they're trained to look for those specific things. That's a really good point there. And you, if, when you have people with, with sociopathic tendencies like Red, like Liz, they, they can push that aside a lot easier than some people can. And so, I mean, it's, it's a manipulation tactic. It's knowing how to read the situation and go in with it which works wonders for what they do. It's great. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, it's the same thing um, in a way. What do you teach a, a kid when they're like with uh, dogs and they're scared? If you act scared, they will come at you. They read fear. But if you come at them like, I don't care, I'm not fearful of you, they will leave you alone. And, and people is the exact same thing. If you act like a victim, they will, they will act as a predator. If you don't, they don't. So that that is, I think, the way that a lot of this on the covers go. Because you act different, people read you different. So it takes a lot of skill to actually read somebody correctly. And I loved that line that Liz gave uh, gave their CI in there, or their their, uh, their contact. I'm blanking on his name. It's the guy that got strapped down to the wheelchair mm-hmm. and shot in the chest. Um she said, we're going to go over it so much that we forget it's a lie. And that kind of reminded me of back in season two when Red and Wrestler are on their way to Dresden. And he said, mm-hmm. you know, Tom Keen, is, he's very good at what he does. He's so good that when he's undercover, he believes the lie. And so mm-hmm. it's it was interesting to see Liz, how well she worked in that world. I mean, and she's done it again and again mm-hmm. and again. And mm-hmm. I, I hope we continue to have her do that because, like I said, undercover Liz is – I love it. And so In general, undercover anybody is fun. And I think part of the ch- charm That's of fun. Raymond Reddington is that he is perpetually undercover. That's it really part. is. That's yeah. He's always telling these charming stories. Liz also ch- told a charming story. It's it's funny because in a way, the more after we've been told that Liz is his daughter, that we're seeing more of him in Liz. But we always been told uh, they we see Katerina in Liz. We see Katerina in Liz. But Katerina must have been also a master manipulator, an undercover, capable, so good that the. Aurea think that she wasn't a person, that there were like six or seven different people, like Vanessa Cruz. She was so good at what she did that nobody believed she was one person. So we see Liz that doing that, and I think we're seeing the, the shades of her mom there. Oh, definitely. And, and she's she's got that innate talent for it. Mm-hmm. So, hey, and if Red's her biological father, she's got Katarina Rostova and Raymond Reddington DNA. Yeah. That's, like I said, that account for that, something. that's impressive. Agnes is going oh, yeah. to take over the world. <laughs> yeah. I can see Agnes and the cover in, 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 uh, when she goes to the kindergarten. She would be investigating something. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, no, today I'm finding out who took, who took my toy. It's all right. I'm not going as myself today. I'm going undercover. One of the few things that bothered me in this episode, and it bothered me terribly, was Liz gets into that room, announces she's an FBI agent, tells them that Red is the CI, and that stop doing anything illegal in front of her. 
Now, that's not the list of episode one and uh, season one and two, where they were like, they had the, the stolen painting and she wasn't doing anything. Uh, they were in a room full of, of things saying property of the United States. They were not, she wasn't saying anything. And it was very, to me, it was very, a, a, an attack on Red in particular, because Red went through enormous efforts with Gregory the Vry to restore his reputation. And here she is, not even announcing, I know this guy is, or I'm I'm a crooked cop or whatever, that she could have said to stop it and, and, and make it, like he does usually know his, I pay him. I pay her to keep me informed. Nothing. It was like this is it. I'm. You're my CI. So basically, he's putting life thread on the line. And I yeah, found and that I, interesting. I have two theories. I have two ways that it could possibly be mm-hmm. uh, in my head, and and there may be a third or fourth or you know a million different reasons for it. The two that I saw is one of two reasons one of them is she just got her badge back she's come back from being on the run she's she's lived this life she's walked in these shoes she understands it better and suddenly she has her badge back and she needs to prove to the fbi that she is still a federal agent she is not a criminal herself. she's a federal agent or to, to herself. herself yeah i mean that's to, she's thinking she's proving it to the FBI. She's really proving it to herself. And so she's going to go. I loved Red's comment. Someone's going to, someone's mm-hmm. over caffeinated this morning. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but that's, she really is going on overdrive there in which, like you said, she, she put Red in danger by doing that. And she doesn't know those people. She doesn't know if they're going to go off and tell other people. And that's one possibility to me is that that she is trying to prove to herself and telling herself that she's proving it to the FBI that she is still agent Elizabeth Keene. She, she is going to toe that line. The Mm -hmm. other thing, and I think this is also possible. She just found out about Kate's death. She's pissed at that point. She has not brought it up to him. She has not made a comment about this. And so she's making his life hell. Mm. You know, it just, she's just angry. It's probably a combo of the two. I think there's a no third is. thing going on. In the episode, we, we, we tackle Emma being first an agent, then going to work for Red full time, losing herself in it. Her marriage got destroyed. Uh, she can't see her kid. Um, I think they're setting that up. They're setting up that comparison. They're setting up those choices for Liz. And this was a very good one where, where you start Liz by saying, I'm an FBI, you're my informant. Liz is harder. Harder, more. Um, she has narcissistic tendencies. It's going to be, however caring she is, it's always going to be about her. So I, I thought it was a very interesting choice they made there. She was also really laying down the boundaries, I think, with him. And that may be another thing, is that she's coming back from this. She's well aware that she has her badge back because of him. She more or less thanked him in the last episode for doing it. Freaked her out a little bit, but she did thank him. And <laughs> now, I mean, it it could very easily come about, well, I got your badge back. I get special privileges. Red wouldn't really, I don't think Red would do that, but it could be seen that way. She could be worried that it is seen that way from anybody that knows. And she's just trying to, kind of like not letting him come to her home right now. She had no problem with Dembe being there. I mean, she didn't bat an eye, she invited him in. But when Red asked if he could come, she told him not right then. So I think that she's trying to lay down some boundaries with him. And that's probably one of those efforts to do it. Mm-hmm. If Red is yes, not going to let I, her go, she's going to let herself go no matter what. She's going to do it she's herself. She's not going to allow Red to control her life. 
she's going to put the space needed there. Even if he's going to be in her life, she's going to make sure that space is there so that she doesn't lose herself. And it very much like the parallel you just, just drew with Emma. You know, Emma lost herself in it. I think Liz is trying to put the brakes on to keep her herself from doing that. Because she, I mean, if you look at her when she was on the run, she did. I mean, it, it was, you saw a wrestler with that, you know, trying to save her from it. And there was a lot of that of, well, I'm just a bad person. And so, so many times she, she told Tom that, she told Red that, in which she felt so guilty over the things she did while she was on the run. I think there's going to be a lot of this try, inner struggle that we're not going to necessarily see spelled out for us, but we're going to see the subtle tones of, you know, the, she's got her badge back. How, how does she earn that to herself? How does she draw the lines that need to be drawn? How does she make sure that she doesn't cross a line that she can never come back from? Has she crossed that line she can never come back from? Is she able to go back? There's just a lot of questions there that she probably doesn't even may not even be allowing herself to really contemplate in very clear terms, but they're still going to be there subconsciously, if that makes sense. Oh, there was a little parallel that happened in my brain and I lost it. Oh, it will come back. Sorry. Um, yeah, it will come back. Um, it, it is It is all very interesting. I, I love the way the writers set things up because they – these seeds have been planted a long time ago, um, and, and, and we are like kind of like picking up those little threads of, of that. And that was a parallel that escaped, but it will come. Um, one of the things that is interesting here is that the person pushing to let go of the past, because Liz right now has all this conflicting things going at her she wants to have answers about her past and that is a little carrot dangle in front of her so the i i thought that that there was an interesting thing that parallel being drawn between um liz wanting answers about her past which necessarily are going to bring red in her life and liz wanting and tom wanting to forget the past and concentrate on the present and she seems to go back and forth between those two um so the the other thing is oh i remember the other thing about that is liz kept saying to herself i'm a terrible person she said it to tom she said it to wrestler i think she has said it to about every person that you know, she's a terrible person. She has done terrible things. I remember there is one question that Red has never answered to her. Was my mother. Everybody talks about her as if she were a terrible person. Was she? And never answered. So I do think that that is another parallel being that was dropped in and it's picking up. It's been picked up a little at a time throughout the series. And I, I love watching The Blacklist because it is so well written. In that sense, that they don't, they don't, they're not blatantly obvious. They just just drop the stuff right there in front of you, like a cat in your in your in your um, keyboard. They just give you a little hint here and a hint there, and you it, you have to do the work to pick up the pieces. You do, and a lot of it is very subtle. They, some writers can do it, some writers can't pull off the subtle, and and these can where they they draw the very very good parallels between they pick up threads that that most of the audience has just assumed have been forgotten it's i mean i remember i spent the majority of season three going we've forgotten bud mccready is never coming back it's been months it must have been months where's mccready and then finally mccready came back when the story allowed for it and mm -hmm. i i've been on i feel like i've kind of been on repeat the last oh at least season four. I, I think it started when I did my rewatch over the summer. The, I just really didn't give enough credit to the writers. They're actually very, very good. Yeah, they are. <laughs> so you, you just have to give them the time that they need because, I mean, and don't get me wrong, a, a lot of people are very... They, they need things right here, right now. Um, and, and I understand that. I'm that way in a lot of things. But 
you can't do that with a story. I mean, this this is not a movie. It's a movie you've got two hours to tell your story. This is a multi-season, and they're going to get... I, I'm pretty sure they're going to get picked up for another season. I don't see why they wouldn't. Um, you know, at least one more season of the show, possibly more. And, um, you know, it, you can't give all the answers right away or... What on earth would people come back for? I understand. I am. I agree. It, it's. Um, I also think that there is an innate tendency that the writers exploit to perfection in assuming that because something was mentioned and then dropped, it's unimportant or, or it's forgotten. forgotten. And the truth is that the yeah, I always repeat it. The blacklist, it's a magic act. Look at it. You got a hat. You got rabbits. You got a guy that wears a hat in, in, in Aram saying he loves magic. It's like magic. Oh, he's a magician. Yes, he is. And the blacklists are doing exactly the same thing. They distract you with a pretty picture over here. And meanwhile, on the other hand, they just put something in, they took it out, so they show it to you, they, you can't say that you didn't see it, then they put it away, and, you know, 15 episodes later, oh, here it is, another little hint, and then at the end, they're going to reveal, they're going to take off the, the cape, and you're going to reveal the whole thing, and you're going to like, oh, wow, that's been there all my, all under, under my very nose, and I never saw it. And so when you watch the blacklist, you really have to pay attention to the little details and keep them in your head because you will start seeing the little bit of drop here, a drop here, a drop here, and you have to add all that to make a clue. I, I think it's great. I, I love this episode seeing those, what you just said, the profiling and the manipulation is just the same coin. You know, in reality, Red and her are very similar. He's just a FBI agent and the other you know, guy's a criminal. So... And um. And it really begs the question of who gets to call it right and wrong. It all depends. I mean, if you go by the law, then, you know, you, you're very clear. One is a criminal, the other one is not. The things start to get muddy when you talk about intelligence because intelligence, uh, it's by nature illegal. I mean, there is a reason why they're called covert units. You know? And that's, that's one reason I've been so entertained with redemption coming up is because we've got a group of people that are sanctioned by the government, but they are not part of the government. So is this a legal group? Is it an illegal group? Is it somewhere in the gray? And it's it's going to be really fascinating. And Scotty really pointed that out in the, the backdoor pilot for mm -hmm. when she made the comment. She said, you guys look the other way all the time when it suits you. It's time mm -hmm. to do it again. You know, well, it's, yeah, and Solomon also had a great line. It's like, you know, we take the cases that are um, legally, uh, legally, um, so, uh, morally, morally acceptable, but legally questionable. Yeah. So morally that, justifiable. Yeah, Boston is justifiable. That is exactly what what they're doing, and and I think as we go along in the series, that distinction in the post office is eroding, and eroding more I and agree. more. One hundred percent agree with that. And as we've watched it with all of the characters, I mean, we we've seen even wrestler who is you've got wrestler who is by the book who is you know I mean. I, I picture him with the rule book by his bedside table, you know, and, but even he has found points where he will bend that binding a little bit as, as Cooper has said before. And Aram, who balked at the idea of committing treason, you know, when they were trying to save Liz, still was willing to go through with it. He's run, you know, wiretaps he shouldn't have run. He's pulled a gun on, <laughs> on the assistant the direction of, of the clandestine yeah. services. And so, yeah. I mean, all of them have been willing to cross that line at various points. It, it's very interesting, and it, it's fascinating to watch them on this journey, and it really is a question of what's morally justifiable and who gets to 
who gets to tag it as morally justifiable? Yeah. Well, it's also, you know, anybody who, any cop who has have an informant who's a criminal, it's um, already on that gray line because that is, you know, illegal. So you're basically making a deal of exchanging a minor offense for a major offense. So the gray is everywhere. We just don't like to call it. But yeah, and so they've all done that. I mean, you've had Cooper, you know, when he beat a guilty man, you know, for a confession Mm -hmm. long before the task force was ever formed. And so this has been a running theme of what what is okay? Where is that line? Is there a line? Is the line blurred? Who says where the line is? And, and what do you do when the people that are supposed to be giving you the line are actually the bad guys, like we saw mm-hmm. in season three? Because the cabal yeah. was so deeply rooted that these are the people that are supposed to be saying, this is what's legal. These are the people making the rules. And, you know, because if they're in the FBI Using the law as a, the as a, as a and weapon. everywhere else, Absolutely. You know that they were everywhere else in the government. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, it it just brings up a lot of questions on who you trust, who gets to say what it is. It's, you know, Mm -hmm. there there are a lot of questions there. And how would you feel? It's fascinating to watch. Let's say that at the end, you realize that Raymond Reddington has this entire time been an undercover agent. He's been running one of the longest undercover ops, then everything that he has done, he's not a criminal. Yet he's killed people. But is he? But but is he a criminal? I mean, because he's done criminal acts, so does that make him a criminal, or is he suddenly justified because he had a bigger goal? Just because the government's not backing him, does that make his bigger goal any less morally justifiable than if the government's backing him? If mm-hmm. a certain government backs him, does that make it more justifiable? I, it, there are so many questions there, and it's that's the wonders of an intelligence community is that a- ambiguity there that we get to deal with. And as a character development fan, uh, it's it's like a candy it's a store for me. <laughs> it's like how can, doesn't it get any it's better? Beautiful, I love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like. Uh... I love that's what I love about intelligence is that is that um, sense that right and wrong are just two sides of the coin. And sometimes I always said, uh, especially I'm old enough to have lived the fall of the United States, of the uh, Russian um, of the Soviet Union. And I remember thinking, you know, sometimes I think that the KGB had more in common with the CIA that they had with the respective governments. They understood each other better. They were living in the same world where the politicians were living somewhere else. Um, and I think that's the origin of the cabal. It's that at some point they realized the politicians were unstable and they come and go and they had their own agendas. And I think that that is the origin of the cabal. And I think as we are gearing towards understanding what the cabal really is, that will all come into, into play. What is really good? What is not good? What is, who's a criminal? Who's a traitor? Uh, are you a traitor because you're doing something f- that is against the rules of your country? Or are you trying to save your country from something else? So, um, what do you thought about Wrestler in this, in this episode? Because there was not much of Cooper. There was not much of anybody else. I, I saw a post on Tumblr. It said there were two seconds of Samar. You know, and it was that was accurate. Poor Samara was just non existent in this episode. Um, not nearly as non existent as Tom, though, by the way, <laughs> who did not show up at all, which, yeah, broke my heart a little bit. But you know, hey, the story story leads where it leads. Um, yeah. it wouldn't have fit. Um, it was, I liked the idea of him basically being Liz's handler in this. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like. You know, with the exception of Cooper, um, I feel like right now he is, he understands her the best in there, and I think he was the best one to be her handler for this. And that, that's, honestly, there wasn't a whole lot to it. I mean, that, that sounds, I feel like I should have so much more, because he was, out of all the, the you know, outside the of Liz and Red, he was the one that had 
the most time. Um, but he honestly again his instincts his instincts are interesting yes, because yeah. he he had that. Remember, he said there's something wrong about it. So yeah. I love that. Well, Liz was saying that too. Liz knew there was something wrong with Emma. And that that's something she went to, she was keying in on. I I think wrestler as I watched him in my rewatch today, that scene where they're sitting on the benches, you know, back to back. I saw wrestler being worried like we just got you back. Do you understand that you went on the run, you could have died and then we got you back and then you did die and then we finally got you back again. And you're going off to a place where we have no jurisdiction. What the hell are you doing, Keen? You know. <laughs> it, I could just almost feel the frustration coming from the, you know, from the screen on him that he's like I know why you're doing this, but Stop being stupid. It was almost like, you know, the, the job and the, the personal friendship were conflicting a little bit in that moment. Yeah, it was the, I mean, if all these people in the witness protection, it would have been a disaster, not just in matters of life loss, but of cases that could never have been closed. So I thought it was a, it was an interesting oh, choice for wrestler. I love the fact that against wrestler instance were like no, there's something is not wrong, it's not right. And she's like no, I don't know. They trust me. And it's like I don't know about that. Um, which brings us to the most interesting character, Emma. She, she was. okay. So it freaked me out because I I knew I recognized the actress when I was watching it. And my first thought, she actually looks, I don't know if you ever watched Friends mm-hmm. when it was on. Yeah, like Lisa Kudrow. Uh, yeah. At certain angles, she actually looks like the actress that plays, yeah, she looks a little bit like Phoebe. She actually played a, care, a more minor role on Once Upon a Time. That's where I know her from. Uh, she played, uh, I'm blank, Abigail, I think was her name on Once Upon a Time. But, and so I, I knew the actress. I knew I knew the actress. And uh, so... But she was fascinating. I've seen a lot of interest sparked with her. Um, I caught on my rewatch today a parallel that I know you had already caught, um, but but I caught it for myself today. When they're in the car and Liz is like, why on earth would you possibly quit your job at MI6 to go work full-time for Raymond Reddington? And she says, you know, her response, he made me feel like I was the center of his universe. And my brain just <laughs> keyed in. It didn't do it the night of the episode, but it keyed in. Yeah, <laughs> the alarms went off, and I went, Carla! Because Carla, when, when Liz went to her for for more information in season two to ask her if she could tell her anything, she said, there's no one on Earth that can make a woman feel like the center of his universe like Raymond Reddington. And that phrasing was so specific. It was so intentional that there has to be a parallel of the drawing there. We just, mm. I, there have been a couple people that have said maybe she's Jennifer. Um, Tess, I know you did when the, the episode and was As on. soon as she and, appears, like, she's right. We just met uh, Jennifer. Yeah. But I, I'm I rather thought. fond of that, and it would also explain if certain things that we've, we've thought about, you know, because I know you've mentioned the Night of the Fire, you think there were two little girls there, one of them being Jennifer. I, I would imagine that Jennifer and Liz knew each other as small children, Jennifer being a couple, three years older, however many years older, and so she probably remembers Liz. And so if she is Jennifer, it makes a lot of sense why she would go so out of her way to protect Liz. That instinct of this is my, you know, whether... You know, this is my little sister. This is, you know, the equivalent of my little sister. What, whatever the case, you know, th- that protection instinct that would come in to walk in and, and protect her from from um, Margot. Mm-hmm. I, I think that you you there you get a lot of those things there uh, as to is Re- is Emma Jennifer the. F- most important thing that I find in that little theory is the fact that Reddington actually sent Liz in there because Emma had gone silent. And if you think about it, it was a dangerous situation. It is. It's a dangerous situation. He sent 
he sent a mother in. I mean, because she was gone, what, a minimum of three days, I would say. Because he was going back and forth between D.C. and Sydney, Australia, which is, what, a 14-hour trip, I think? Even on a mm-hmm. private jet, it's probably at least that. And so he's been going back and forth at least twice. So she, minimum of three days for that heist, I think. Um, at the And probably more like a week. Somewhere in there, mm-hmm. between three and, and six days, maybe. In a dangerous so she was, situation. She was deep cover, so she wasn't she wasn't leaving. She went dark for multiple days, so she wasn't with her child. She didn't get to reach out to her family. She was in t- she was deep cover for that time. And so, in saying deep cover, with the the difference between deep cover and just undercover being that deep cover. You don't surface from it. You know, you you 100% live, breathe it. You're not going home to your family. You were staying wherever. I mean, she was staying with Emma, it looked like, when she was... Okay, here's an interesting question that leads into it. Do you think Liz was really drunk? I don't know. I never thought about it. I would think it would be a dangerous... As as soon as Emma said... as soon as Emma said that, my reaction was, yeah, my reaction was that she wasn't drunk. She was faking it to get in, telling to give across what she needed to get across. Yet it was enough that Emma knew who she was. Unless yeah, Emma has always known who she was. Did, so, I, you I, know, I never it. did a I second rewatch. Emma knew what to look for. Yeah. I think I think that Emma knew what to look for was the key. Is that she, if she hadn't been connected to Reddington, nothing Liz said would have keyed her off. But she was connected to Reddington, so something she did, something she said, keyed her off. But Margot never knew. Um, I'm blanking on the other girls' names, but you know, none of them ever keyed into it. So I don't think you know. I know there was a reaction on Tumblr that said, oh my gosh, why would you go undercover and get wasted? I don't think she was. I think it takes quite a bit for Liz to get drunk. Because we saw her in season three when she was on the run. Drink after drink after drink with what's his name? You know, the, the hillbilly. Jasper. 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 That was his and name. And she got him plenty drunk, but but she was drinking right along with him. And she drank him under the table. Yeah, I never, you know what, I would have to rewatch when they when they first saw each other because, I mean, this could go both ways. She could not be Jennifer Reddington, just be what she said she is. She's an MI5 agent that, um, that Reddington is working with, and finally she just went to work with him full time. Could be that. However, there are interesting little things that happened. The fa- first, that one that we just talked about, he sent her, he sent Liz because Emma went silent. The fact that he sent Emma in, he sent Emma in for, because of the, to see what they were going to steal. So that is interesting. She was in there way before Liz. Now she goes dark. Red sends Liz. The Liz, he was going crazy. He was like dying when she died, when he thought her dead, and yet he's sending her because Emma went silent. So that tells me this is something interesting. This is something to look for. Now we got the second thing. Je- Emma using the exact wording that Carla used, and you know when you grow up with someone, you always think in the same. Kind of, you hear things and you tend to refer to things in the same kind of language as your parents do. It's a normal thing. Um, that's one thing. And then there is all this British little things going on. So I'm starting to 